All right, welcome back to Boring Reviews. Nick here, and I am flying solo. The beard is coming back, as you can see. How long will it stay? Nobody knows. But let's get to more important things. I made a decision last night. Now, I'm a teacher. I have kids, married, all that kind of stuff, responsibilities galore. But I have a great wife. As you know, you see her on the channel. She allows me to go to movies whenever I pretty much want to when I have the free time. And so I made a decision last night. It was a tough decision. The Joker just came out. Hugely, highly anticipated movie. I cannot wait to see it. But, Syra near Narasima Reddy, I know I was get that third word wrong, also came out here in the States on Wednesday, I believe. It's very, very limited viewings where I'm living at. And so there was an 8 o'clock showing at a theater that I actually had to pay money to see because I'm part of the AMC program, which means I pay $20 a month. I can see all the movies I want for the most part. But I decided to go to a different theater, pay the $16. I got the subtitles to watch Syra. I watched that over the Joker. And if you've watched my reviews, especially the American movie reviews, you know I'm a huge comic book fan of the movies at least. Really excited about the Joker. So, me choosing Syrah over the Joker. Paying $16. That should show everybody how excited I am about Indian cinema. And I've seen a few Indian films so far. I've enjoyed every single one to a certain degree. And this one was definitely no exception. Before I get into the details about this, I just want to say right at this right at the beginning i'm gonna get the names wrong i'm gonna say them not perfectly and that's okay boring reviews is what you're watching we are a newer youtube channel typically i have at least one or two of my friends with me and we are doing reactions we're doing reviews but like i said last night i went at the last minute to watch syra and so here you go here we go boring reviews Now, one of the requests early on for me to do the trailer reaction said it's pronounced Sayra. Sayra. And so I have been going with that. But millions of times in that movie last night, they mentioned it, the pronunciation as Syrah. So that's where I'm going. I'm going with Syra. And if you see the movie, you know what I'm talking about. They chant his name, which is awesome, but they chant his name a lot. Syra, Syra, Syra. And then when they say the full name, Holy cow, I don't know how they say that so quickly, but they do. But let's get into my thoughts on Syrah. Now, I went into this movie with the um, background knowledge of the previous Indian films I had seen. I did not go into this movie with American cinema, with Hollywood um, brain going, all right? So I'm, I'm going to compare it apples to apples here. This movie, like all the other movies I've seen, was a tad bit too long okay let me let me correct that this movie was a tad bit too long all the other movies not necessarily had that issue but they were all very long at least two and a half hours or three hours long now for me going on a friday night after a long week of work eight o'clock at night that may have contributed to it but this movie holy cow i enjoyed it a whole lot and i'm going to get into that in a second but i guess i'm going to start with the negative because i'm a negative person here we go this movie its biggest flaw, in my opinion, and again, I'm comparing it to the other Indian films that I've seen. The biggest issue with this movie is the director, Surrender Reddy, who did a great job with his direction. Great job. He was, the, the shots that he got with his cinematographer were phenomenal. I have always praised the visuals in every Indian film that I've seen, especially on an epic scale like Bahubali 1 and 2, and now this, even Dungal. The visuals are top-notch. They cannot get any better. I mean, the crisp way that all these shots came out were amazing. His direction was on point. But he also wrote the script for this movie. And this is where I feel that he bit off way more than he could handle. Bit off more than he can chew, so to speak. Because there was several parts throughout this movie. And this is already almost a three-hour movie 
where we are just fast forwarding through every sequence so that we can get all of this kind of cut down to this. It's just like if I do a review and it takes 40 minutes and I love every minute of it and I'm trying to cut a little bit out of here, here, I gotta fast forward a lot of stuff so I can get all that good content in. That's how I felt with about half of the movie, not the entire movie, but half is still a long time to just kind of speed through all these sequences so that we can get it in. And for me, not knowing the native language of the movie and having to um, depend on the subtitles, it was not only were the subtitles going very quickly, and that's fine, I can keep up with the reading, but just trying to read that, enjoy the visuals, and try to enjoy everything that's going on and being crammed in together, that was my biggest flaw with this movie. And it did sometimes take me out because I'm sitting there wondering myself as I'm watching this awesome visual, what just happened? Now, there are some parts of this movie that do slow down. I'm a huge fan of acting, story, character development. And this movie had all those three things. It did. I just wanted a little more character development. But when Saira meets Lakshmi, the dancer, I really, really love that storyline. And I love what they did with this. This is going to be a non-spoiler review. Non-spoilers. But I had no problems with that storyline that they did with those two characters. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. There could be some things that people aren't a big fan of. I had no problem. I thought it was very natural. I thought it was completely fine with the the movie that we were being presented. And Syra, let me just say right now, it is a tragedy. It really is. It's a tragic, dramatic action film. It really is. It reminded me a lot of like a Shakespeare play. And I wonder if Surrender Ready used some of that as an inspiration where there's so many parts of the story that go in a direction you don't expect. Where there's so many parts of the story that go in a direction that you don't expect, but the common theme they have is just tragic. It's tragic, but it's not a waste tragedy. And what I mean by that is I cannot stand movies, and I've seen them before. I cannot stand movies that I sit there, whether it's two hours or three hours, through the entire journey, and at the end, it was not a happy ending, but it was not fulfilling whatsoever. There was no point to it. I feel like those are movies where the director just wants to surprise you. He's, his, main, his or her main goal is to show you something that you weren't expecting. Ha, got you. And I don't think that's genuine. I don't think that's good. This movie did not follow that line. This movie was tragic, but I completely agreed and understood with every single decision that the director made. Um, and that's where Surrender Ready my hat's off to you. You did a great job with that story. And there is a lot to tell in this. And with me saying there's a lot crammed in, I'm not saying it's a bad movie because it's not. But it, we could have used a few of those sequences and just taken them out so that we can focus and we can marinate more on what was in front of us. So getting back to Syra and the love interest, we also get presented with another love interest later on. I'm not going to say anything. Okay, I really enjoyed that storyline as well. Both actresses that played these different um, female characters, they did a phenomenal job. At one point, I wondered, is that the same exact actress? Because they looked very, very similar. But then when, as you're watching the movie and as you see them more, you realize that they do have distinct differences. But both beautiful, both wonderful actresses that play these two characters, they did a great job. And I really enjoyed those storylines. I felt like that really, really helped this movie um, for me to have that buy-in because I cared about those characters. And obviously, Syra, the main character played by Sharon Jeevy. Hopefully I said your name correctly. Let's talk about Sharon Jeevy for a second. This guy is only two years younger than my father. And I'm not saying my father is an old man, but he is in his 60s for crying out loud. Sharon Jeevy is playing the main action star in this movie, and I know he didn't do all his own stunts, at 60 some odd years. That is in Incredible. And there's a few scenes, not a lot, a few scenes where his age did show. It really did. But he was phenomenal. I had zero issues with him or the character whatsoever. He committed to the role. He committed to his lines. He did an amazing job. He had that awesome epic stare that I've seen like in KGF and other Indian films where the characters are just really good at that epic stare. Or, you just ticked me off, so now see what's going to happen. And that's the best part of this movie. Not just Sharon Jeevy's portrayal of Syra, but the um, the direction that the director takes us on the story. Again, there's a little too much in there, but what's in there is awesome. You feel for the characters. There are, again, some tragic, 
horrible, hard to watch sequences, but they build on the story. They elevate what's going on. They definitely illustrate, and it's done in a fictional way, but they illustrate the struggle that India went through as they were being um, controlled by the British. And they definitely villain, vilify the British here, okay? But let's be honest, right? When you have one country control another country, it's, it's not going to be a great relationship. And so they definitely did a great job of illustrating the struggle, illustrating the idea that, yes, these people are taxing us, these people are controlling us, these people have our lands and everything else, even though it's ours. But if we go against them, we could die. We can lose our lives. And that was the main story of Syrah right here. His whole objective was to do whatever he could, even if it cost him his life, to um, give freedom to his people. And that is something here in America we can easily relate to. And in so many other countries that have that in their history, they can easily relate to. And I really liked how at the end, again, this is a lot of fiction, but based on some reality, at the end they showed some real Indian leaders that really got the job done in the 1940s to early 1950s, like Gandhi, obviously, and a few others. That was really cool how they brought it full circle. For me, just doing that at the very end with the credits, for me, that gave it even more sincerity and more genuine understanding of the 100-year struggle, really, of trying to get that freedom once um, the Indian people said, we're all in, we're going to do this. So there was a lot of interesting themes, really good, powerful themes in this. One line that I still remember that Syrah says near the end of the film, I love this line. He said, it's not about the um, responsibility, sorry, it's not about the relationships that we make in life. It's about the responsibilities that we hold to in life. That is a guy who is passionate. I have met and I have seen on TV plenty of people that think the opposite. It's all about the relationships. It's all about my fun. It's all about what I want. I really loved that thinking because to a certain degree, I do agree with that. It's about you have responsibility. You have to meet that responsibility. But I also agree you got to have some fun in there too. You can't have life be completely responsibility. But Syra, that was him as a character, all about responsibility. That was a powerful line. Um, this movie definitely goes, like I said before, in ways and directions that you don't expect, which it was fulfilling, so it's good. Um, this movie had, ama like I said, visuals, unbelievable. Indian films, and I will say this right now, are the best in the world from what I've seen at color. Use of color, use of culture, use of dancing, use of singing, having those music videos in the movies, but having them be um, completely genuine and not taking you out of the movie, it's it's phenomenal. India does the best job at this. You can and these movies again are way lower budgets than American films, but there are certain sequences where the people are at a festival and they are just. I mean, it's honestly like a Cirque du Soleil show that you go to and you're paying a hundred dollars a person to to watch on the big screen. And these people, they have all these inventive different ways of celebrating like there is a crazy little contraption with these lights and fire that these people are turning around there was guys all painted in complete tiger uniforms but all with their body i mean people dancing around throwing away the dust and the spices and different colors all of that i just absolutely loved and you get that early on so you are just right there the entire time um this movie was a lot of fun when it slows down for me, it really slows down. When it speeds up too fast, it was hard for me to catch up. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. The story was nothing new, but it had some new elements to it about a country trying to become their own and get their own freedom. Definitely some powerful moments, like with the race with the horse and the older man, and then the older man comes back later on. That was a great part. Um, so many different parts, but I don't want to spoil anything for you. So... Let me talk about a grade here because I think I've covered all the important things I wanted to cover with this movie. This was the very first Indian film that I've seen in the theater, so quiet celebration or loud celebration for that. This is something we do in, in class so the students can agree or disagree without making too much noise. I was very proud about that. It's not going to be the last one. War is in the theaters right now, and we'll see if I can get to that one. I'm going to try to. But my grade for Syra, and I'm going to be lazy and just call it Syrah, I'm going to give this a B plus, okay? Now, I gave a B minus to something in one of the, the 
audience members left a comment and thought I was dissing the movie or insulting it. Anything above a C for me is it's a good movie. Rotten Tomatoes language, it's a fresh movie. It's good, okay? B plus is really good. A is just for those movies that are just upper echelon. I'm going to buy the second they come on Blu-ray. I'm going to watch it again and again. Syrah for me is one of those films where I don't know if I need to watch it again and again. But I was really, really glad I saw it. But again, there was just too much. There was too much for me to follow. And that brought it down from an A- minus to a B plus. But the action was great. Absolutely phenomenal. They did a great job of the slow motion really getting us focused on what's going on, battle scenes, amazing choreography in those battle scenes, amazing acting going on, um, great delivery of the dialogue. There's just sometimes too much dialogue and too much being crammed in, and it was it was slower at certain parts, but love the relationships and everything else, so it gets a B plus. Born Reviews, that's a very good grade. So if you liked my review, go ahead and consider giving me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already. We have many other reactions and reviews to Indian films and, of course, Hollywood films. We will never stray from the Hollywood films. That's what we started doing, and we're going to keep doing it. But if you like what you see, check out more. And until next time, adios. Boy Reviews!